This conference will now be recorded. So before I start uh, this uh, demo, okay. So let me introduce myself. My name is Bobby. I have overall 13 years of experience in my career. I started my career with a BAP, then I moved to SAP Wi-Fi, Fury, a BAP Data, Fury Elements, a BAP RESTful application programming model, and uh, RAP, and also worked on various uh, S4 HANA implementation projects and working on the BTP technology, PTP work also, like few services I'm working, like uh, IoT services, okay, and uh, portal services, mobile services, PDMS services, API services, okay. So this and also the conversation a chatbot, IRPA. So these are these various services uh, which um, I was working and also currently I'm working. Okay, so that is my experience. Coming to the training from past seven years, I'm giving training on SAP UiFi, Fury, ABAP Core Data, Fury Elements, ABAP CDS Views, ABAP RESTful application programming model, or RAP and BTP. Okay, so this is my training experience. I have completed around 47 batches until now. Okay, so that is my experience in the training. So today I'm giving a demo on the ABAP RESTful application programming model called RAP. Okay, and uh, which is the latest technology in ABAP and the evolution of ABAP has went from the on-premises to the BTP technology with uh, by using the RAP introduction. Clear? So now what is the agenda today topics which we will be covering? Okay, SAP evolution from the starting date to till date what evolution has come in SAP? We are going to discuss ABAP on cloud. Okay, see we have uh, lot of things in the uh, what you can say in the BTP so we call it as uh, SAP cloud platform got renamed to the BTP that is called business technology platform so and they have introduced uh, not only on-premises ABAP they have introduced ABAP in the cloud so what exactly it is okay ABAP restful application uh, programming model called RAP okay so in this why we are using RAP technology to develop the applications okay then we will come to the s4 hana in app and side by side extensions now everyone are talking about low code no code right so is one of the feature of the s4 hana extension is one of the future for the low code and no code okay yes we will discuss about in evolution of abap what has come that we are going to discuss and what is sap fury and use case demo so this is the agenda of the topics which I will be covering in today's demo. Is it clear guys? So now let's discuss about the SAP evolutions from the starting date to till date. Okay, what evolutions has come in the SAP we are going to discuss. Okay, first we have a file exchange. Okay, so what is the file exchange? Okay, so we are, this is the oldest technology which we are started using it to provide the data to the third party system from the SAP. Okay, from the SAP system, if I want to send the data to the any third party system, so we are going to use this file transfer without any complex coding and configurations using the FTP and SFTP, the file can transfer from SAP to any third party system. Okay, so with the help of SAP, FTP and SFTP, then later with the arrival of the PI that is called process integration, the extracted file the, from the SAP is sent first to PI, then the mapping happens based on the requirements, then it is going to post with the third party. Okay, so we used to send this file in the desired format of JSON model, XML model, etc. <coughs> Is it clear? So using the file exchange, using this FTP, SFTP concept, we are able to send the data from the SAP to non-SAP system, then using the PI in the picture and we used to send the data. Okay, send the data, the extracted file from the SAP was sent first to the PI and there the mapping will happen and then we are dumping into the third party system. So this is what the file exchange has happened. 
Okay. See, I'm not talking about the which technology has come first, which technology has come second. No, I'm talking about overall. Okay, what are the different technologies which SAP has introduced from the starting date to till date? That is what which I'm going to talk. Clear? Any questions? No, right? Okay, next is RFCs. Yes, using RFCs. So, so this is what uh, we are. This is our ERP system. Using before I go to the RFC, using PI, we are able to send the data to the PI where mappings, conversions, and encryptions happens in the PI middleware, and then it is sending to the business third party system. Okay, so that is what which we have seen. Now coming to the another approach where we are sending the data from the SAP system to the third party system using the RFCs that is called the remote functional call. And this is a classical model approach which okay is a remote RFC is called remote functional call. Okay, so RFC interface is used to set up a communication between SAP and SAP or SAP to non-SAP systems. Okay, it runs in the concept of client and server. Okay, the client is can be anything. It can be a Java application or anything. It is going to call a, it's going to fun, perform a function and makes a call to the RFC server. The function is executed at the remote system on the server side and it can be synchronous. Okay, so using Java or a Node.js, they will, any third party technology can call this RFC function model and it, they can get the get data. Okay, so this is what which we are following sending the data from the SAP system to the non SAP systems. So the external system to SAP system or SAP system to the SAP system, we can use RFC connections. Any questions guys? Is it clear? Okay, the next is the IDOC. Yes, everyone knows. Okay, IDOC is an intermediate document, is another old approach where we used to communicate data between SAP to SAP as well as SAP to non SAP systems. Okay, so what does this interface? It is going to provide in a file format for exchanging the data between systems. The format it can be consist of structures, fields with positions, length, and and headers, data segments, and status of the record. So that is what which IDOC contains. Okay. So using the IDOC, okay, we are able to send the data from the SAP system to the SAP system or using EDI concept, we are able to send the data from the SAP to, to the non sap systems so this is what another approach we are sending the data from the sap system to the non sap systems or sap system to the sap systems and it is also classical approach okay then we move to the soap service okay with sap version 7.0 and netweaver SAP introduced a new technology called web services where if you for communicating and exchanging the data between the SAP and SAP as then SAP to non SAP systems. Okay, so we can say that using this SOAP, it is a messaging protocol that is supported by version 7.0 onward with SAP NetWeaver Gateway. And it is an internet based technology where we are going to transfer the uh, data from the SAP to the non SAP, some SAP to the non SAP systems. Okay. And we are using the HTTP protocol use, is used in the SOAP service. The client receives the details of the parameters and the functions in the form of WSDL, that is called web service description language okay there which can be retrieved through a defined url okay how we are going to send the data via xml messages so using the soap services we are able to send the data from the sap to the non sap systems okay this is what which we are using 
okay so using the soap services we are doing it that is the evolution has come into the sap then we went to the sap s4 hana yes this is what where big evolution has started okay okay so it is a fourth version of the erp business okay provided by sap which is based on the hana in memory database yes it is a big evolution in sap system the concept okay which is got released in the 2015 year okay so over the period it is proven that no matter how complex are the business requirements are how large the data is s4 hana is capable to deal with every problem okay it is available in the cloud as well as on premises system okay so s4 hana follows the okay where how complex your requirement is it is going to handle it okay so this is a big evolution of uh, sap has started from the year 2015 and s4 hana is introduced okay s4 hana follows the code to data paradigm which uses a mechanism of code push down okay which means the complicated data computations happens in the database layer very important instead of the application layer okay very important point what we need to remember is all the data computations happens not in no more in the application layer it is going to happen in the database layer so this is the big advantage of using this concept as for hana yeah any questions Yeah, if you don't have questions, can you mute yourself, please? Thanks. Okay, so using the S four Hana, they have we are going to follow the okay code to data paradigm which use a mechanism of code push down which means all the complicated data which is there which computations which happens not in the application layer it is going to happen the database layer so that is the reason the introduction of cds has come into the picture okay okay and amdp has come into the picture and cds table functions has introduced in s4 hana is it clear guys any questions guys okay so next is from in the s4 from the s4 hana we are moving to the od okay as i said i am not talking about which has come first which has come next i am talking about only the evolutions what are the technologies which have used in the sap i am talking about. Okay, the next which I'm talking about is O data. Yes. Okay. O data stands for the Open Data Protocol. As I mentioned. Okay. As I mentioned. Okay. The, the introduction of the okay is the future is the programming model is called RESTful programming model. Okay. In that context, O data is going to play the important role. okay okay so using the o data we are exposing the data from the sap system to the non sap systems using the o data protocol yes it is a protocol okay which follows the rest guidelines okay and we are using those guidelines and we are exposing the data from the sap system to the non sap systems and anyone any once you expose o data anyone can access it very easily okay you can open in excel sheet you can open in the browser any technology any device can access the data is it clear guys okay so wo data is going to play very key role in developing the applications any questions guys anyone have any questions There are different pro protocols which we are following it. Okay, so different protocols. See, REST is a protocol. O data follows the guy protocol of the REST. Okay, so both are different. 
protocols which they are following it okay so you are talking about what is the difference between the rest and soap all are see rest follows the different protocol okay and uh, sorry o soap follows the different protocol is it clear but, but, but both are web services absolutely okay. see see no 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 see you are talking about rest means it is a protocol okay o data we are using o data we are exposing the data soap we are using the exposing the data but what i am telling right okay rest is the guidelines to expose the data okay so it is a different okay. guidelines okay so what i am telling right rest is the is based on the principles of web and uses hypertext transfer protocol for communication between clients and server whereas soap is a protocol that uses the extensible markup language for communication between clients and servers is it clear rest is uses the principles of web and uses the http protocol whereas soap is a protocol that uses the extensible markup language okay for communication between the clients and servers that means most of the companies use rest because that will be faster i guess correct absolutely okay yeah any more questions guys no right okay now in s4 hana cds and bop has come to the picture okay. what is cds core data services which it means okay so it yeah any questions guys people have let me tell which version do we use in o data v2 or v4 okay okay so oh, oh gunjan you are not able to hear me or uh, you are able to hear me right hello yeah actually i was not able to hear from laptop i am uh, joining from my mobile okay 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 so the other question from sagar is what is the which version do we use okay so you, i don't know whether you are talking about an on premises system or in the uh, what you can say btp okay so in on premises system okay okay if you look at the lowest versions in s4 hana they have only v2 okay in the latest versions they have v4 okay in btp yes we have v2 and v4 version both o data hope this i have cleared your is it you got it yes babin sagar we are yeah. we are going to use both versions v2 and v4 right yeah yeah in my in, tech, in my training yes we are going to use both versions okay what is the difference between v2 and v4 any something any... see it's upgrade any simple it's upgrade see you are moving from the s4 hana from ecc to the s4 hana what it has additional features simple okay so this also you v2 and v4 it's upgrade of v2 it has an additional features okay advantages okay. okay so suppose let's take that you are planning to i'll take i'll give an example to you see suppose you are planning to select a multiple records and you are planning to update it the data using this wrap about festival programming model concept so in the older version v2 okay there is a different technology to to send total data from the front end to the back end we have to write certain additional steps when we use v4 no additional steps automatically it will be taking when you select a records and go update will go all the four records will come back to the sap system so there is additional features will happen obviously the upgrades keeps happening right so that's the difference between the v2 and v4 a lot of uh, different uh, are there differences are there so it's a uh, upgrade i would say hope this cleared yeah. so next we are talking about cds core data services which means okay see generally okay we are we have everyone have listened the concept right of the code push down okay what is that code push down instead of writing the code in the application server we will do simple calculations and what are the complex queries 
everything will put in the CDS views. What is the advantage? When we run the CDS view, it is not going to run in the application layer. It is going to run in the database layer. The performance will be very good. That is the reason we are using CDS views. And also, so functions are very similar to SQL statements. Okay, it got inherited from this SQL and we can utilize the benefits of the SQL. Okay, is it clear guys? That is the reason we are see, one of the biggest advantage of having CDS use. Any questions guys? Is it clear? Then BOPF has come into the picture. Yes, business object process framework. Okay, so what exactly it is uh, BOPF? Okay, see, suppose you want to, in the Fury applications, okay, so you want to have a certain actions based on the events. Okay, so totally what to do? We do SOP, UFI and everything. But uh, when you come into the Fury elements concept, we can add a buttons in the Fury application, okay, using Fury elements and we can write a class method code whenever we click on the button, the total, you can update the data in this BOPF concept. Okay, and also it is going to give a draft functionality means, which means the temporary version of the business object instance is created until it is permanently stored in the persistent layer as an active version. For so that also, we are going to use the BOPF. Okay, so using BOPF, one can create a transactional app capable to perform the crude operation without any UIFI design. Understood? Why you are using BOPF? Without any using UIFI design, we can able to create a transactional apps capable to perform crude operations. That is the reason we are using BOPF. Any questions, guys? Anyone have any questions? Uh, Bobby, it seems yeah, that BOPF is outdated and... Um... Yeah, yeah, I'll come to that. I'll come to that. I'll come to that. Okay. The next one is called the APIs. Okay. So the with the future is the RESTful application programming model, and also the web APIs will be adopted in parallel to ODATA and Fury because it is an open source framework for writing HTTP APIs. Okay, using HTTP protocol web APIs can refer to the API on the internet. Okay, so that any technology Java, .NET, etc. This APIs can be consumed, can be built. Okay, so that is the reason we are using APIs. Okay, mm, any questions guys? Now, actually the comes is called the wrap. Okay, so this is called the wrap. Okay, now let me write actually instead of behavior definition. Uh, I'll just write a BAP, sorry, a BAP RESTful application program. A BAP RESTful application programming model that is called RAP. This is the latest in now current in a BAP side, SAP side. A BAP RESTful application programming model RAP is the latest, which is available in on-premises as well as in BTP. I would say it is available in BTP as well as in on-premises system from since from I would say 1909 S4 HANA system onwards RAP is available. Okay, so in the RAP, what is RAP? Why we are using RAP? Okay, that will make okay why we are using the RAP technology to build the applications. 
okay so before going to that okay let's understand what evolution has come in a back that we will discuss then we'll come back to the wrap okay so now anyone have any questions related to the sap evolutions from starting date to till date what are the evolutions what are the technologies which sap has introduced abroad so okay anyone have any questions no questions okay so now uh, evolution of the abap has come into the picture what evolution abap since uh, this is a classical approach down we used to have ecc okay system and business suite and we used to install the netweaver gateway components in ecc system and we used to connect to the oracle database then we have upgraded from this to the s4 hana on premises system from ecc and also s4 hana cloud also is available in btp this is for on premises and this is for btp then total innovations everything as now in a web layer where you can connect to the hana database okay so what i am planning to tell you that the total evolutions has happening now in this web layer what revolutions what things are coming it is nothing but a map restful application programming model so all the newest technologies all the evolutions everything is happening in the map restful application programming model okay so wrap is not only available for s4 hana cloud and also s4 hana on premises system okay now as i said from the 1909 s4 hana wrap is available and in s4 hana cloud wrap is available what is sap btp what is sap cloud platform okay sap cloud platform or sap btp it is going to offer a variety of runtime like java node js hana and now it is abap sap btp provides support necessary runtime it is going to it is a platform that is going to provide you a necessary runtime for example if you want to write this code related to the c in notepad we cannot run we require a c compiler if you want to run on java program we have to install jre so called java runtime so called jre and similarly if you want to run a bap program you require a bap player which can understand your code compile your code check for syntax errors and it executes your code then that runtime environment is part of sap btp and this is we call as service as platform as service so sap btp is nothing but it is providing you a service where you can develop the applications as a platform service as a platform as a service any questions guys no questions okay so what i want to tell you right now all the evolutions everything is happening in the abap layer okay now we can move from normal abap to the new one you can build side by side extensions you can build new dimensions on abap restful application programming model okay and the bopf got deprecated and everything is coming into the abap restful application programming model only okay abap restful application programming model is a new agent new completely it's a new technology which which is completely focus on to build the end to end custom business applications using the components like cds views okay in the database layer okay and behavior definition and implementation in the business layer okay so to build fury applications and the apis we are using the wrap restful application programming model so what we are using for wrap to develop the apis and the fury applications we are using wrap technology
Is it clear, guys? Any questions? Anyone have any questions until now? So now, if your SAP system is less than or equal to 7.5, we used to have a classical programming mode. Yeah, that is, yeah, please tell me. Yeah, uh, as I'm already doing UI5 theory from you, so my question is like, how important is to know rep uh, for, for the, uh, I mean, uh, while working in a real world scenario? Okay, see, SAP UFI is a technology to develop the Fury applications. It is just a client programming. Okay, where RAP I'm talking about is a server programming. Along with this server programming, we are going to use the predefined templates which SAP is providing, predefined Fury templates which SAP is providing to build the Fury applications. Okay, when you talk about real time, in the real time, projects if your requirement is such a way and we cannot use the templates which sap is providing predefined templates then we have to use the freestyle development that is nothing but usap wi-fi is it clear point number one why we required sap wi-fi yes okay point number two what is wrap using the sap is providing certain templates with the help of the RAP, we can develop the Fury applications with the help of the templates. Second thing, using RAP, we can build the APIs also. Okay. Yeah, any more questions? No, right? Okay. So if your system is less than or equal to 7.5 then you are going to have a classical approach only okay if your system is greater than or equal to little bit less greater than or less than or, greater than or equal to 7.5 we call it as a BAP programming model on fury where we used to develop the odata service in ECGW and we are going to expose the odata and publish or we are going to cds views and we are going to use pop Next, if it is greater than or I would say the SAP BTP as well as on-premises system from 1910, a BAP RESTful application programming model has come into the picture. Instead of the SCGW and odata.publish, we are going to use business services. Instead of serious, serious use is available. Instead of the BOPF, we are going to use behavior definition and implementations. There is no more SAP GUI is required when we are building the okay, SAP, a BAP RESTful application programming model. We will be doing exposing the data from the SAP to the non-SAP systems or building the Fury applications using templates in Eclipse only. Is it clear? Any questions, guys? No questions. Okay, now what is RAP? What is consist of? Okay, it consists of concepts, tools, frameworks, languages, and best practices. So that will help uh, the developers to develop in an efficient way to develop the enterprise grade applications. That is called the RAP. It RAP SAP brought in the RAP best concepts, best tools, best frameworks, best languages, and best practices so that we can develop the applic enterprise grade applications in the efficient way. Okay. So what it consists of? It consists of service development where you can develop Fury apps as well as APIs. What is usually which programming model? It, we can use is greenfield developments as well as brownfield developments. It is available in on-premises as well as in the on-cloud. So in on-premises, it is available from 1909 S4ANA system offers. Any questions, guys? okay so now what that wrap contains what are the different sections what we do okay 
for example we have a database table okay then we will create a cds view on the top of the cds in the cds view we are going to fetch the data from the database table on the top of the cds view we will make the cds view as a root keyword so that will convert into the wrap methodology in the data definition language we do then we will restrict the data if you want to restrict the data using data access control and we use data control language to do that then we will be enhancing the template which sap is providing the fury templates using the metadata extension concept that is called annotations we are going to use then we are we no more bopf will come into the picture behavior definition will be there where we will use behavior definition language here we will tell whether you want to create the record whether you want to delete the record whether you want to update the record whether you want to do manipulating the transaction data everything we will be defining in the behavior definition and we will be implementing in the behavior implementation and there we will be writing a baps oops oops a bap code okay so this is the structure where as a developer to develop the wrap applications any questions guys any questions no questions <coughs> So, as I said, before ABAP restful programming model has come into the picture, we used to have a ABAP programming model for Fury, where we used to create a table, we used to create interface view that reads the data from the table which we created, we used to create a consumption view that reads from the interface view, and we used to create a metadata extension file where we used to add the UI annotations, and we used to expose as O data, and we used to have a draft handling also available in the ABAP programming model on Fury. But now. in the abap restful application programming model up to which are not green okay is the same steps which we follow in the abap programming model on fury the additional which we used to follow in wrap we used to define entity for business object we are creating a be defining behavior definition implementing the behavior definition behavior projections service definitions and service bindings these are the additional features which we are doing but what is advantage yes we are doing the additional add okay then what is required to do extra steps when compared to abap programming and the abap restful programming with the which are in the green we are doing extra steps if you do extra steps there should be an advantage then only we will be doing right so what advantage we are doing it let's say you have developed a wrap application using the would using the o data service v2 and with ui annotations now your manager or the client want hey i don't want v2 i want v4 now it is the big advantage of is you not required to develop from the scratch you will to just go and to create one more service binding with the v4 that is done everything will take care of automatically so there is no need to develop from this guys so that is the reason we are using this extra steps in wrap suppose you have you want you have used for the v2 create update and delete then we and you have decided for v4 i don't want delete i want only create an update there is no need of doing back and doing thing in the behavior definition will just comment the code then it will be working simple so so this type of additional advantages you will be getting when we are using the wrap technology any questions guys anyone have any questions is it clear you guys are understanding just i want to know check with you guys because i keep talking is not gunjan reads sagar saikat satish you guys are able to understand yes sir okay how about uh, gunjan yeah yeah yes okay. go okay thanks satish how about i, I don't know whether i'm pronouncing reads uh, correct i'm pronouncing i don't know hello okay how about sagar it's it's okay. good uh, okay thanks thanks reads okay so now what is the application development paradigm okay so we will implement the same thing in our demo okay but we will not do the behavior implementation because this is a demo i cannot go in depth it's a demo will close with very simple example yes we will create a database table in the cloud 
and we will create a CDS view and we'll fetch the data from the database table. Then we'll create a behavior definition and on the top of the behavior definition, we'll be creating the creating the record, deleting the record, updating the record will be defining the behavior definition. Okay, then on the top of the CDS view, we'll create a service definition and service the binding, then we will expose as a Fury app. This is what which we are going to do now in the and we'll build the Fury application. Okay, so how? Okay, so whatever, <coughs> let me open. Okay, so this is nothing but your cloud instance. Okay. I'll just sign in again. So it's a demo, I'm going right away to the development, but I'll explain what is the background of this instance. It's taking time to load. This is SAP BTP. Okay, in the BTP, one of the service in the service marketplace is called ABAP service. Okay. This is the service. Okay. I have added this instance here. So this is my user ID. Okay. So this is, I have added this instance here. Okay. Then I'm able to build the applications in the BTP using this Eclipse. Okay. So now I'm going to create a package. <laughs> Then I'm going to next. It's the same thing which we create a package in our SAP app system. Then I'm going to create a new transport request. And click finish button. So this will create a package that will be under Z local. Okay. Any questions? Is it clear? <coughs> Anyone have any questions? go back okay so now i have i have i have added the package but i want to bring the package into my favorites simple right click add package and just give this one and yes this is the package which we created and i brought it in the in my perfect now under the package i'm going to create a data dictionary table right click on this package other ABAP history, repository, and you can write AWS demo. I click next. So this is a demo. I'm just going to copy and paste it. Not I'll just write the code. <coughs> so I'm going to create a table. Database table I'm creating in Okay, and I'm sending a transport request and I'm clicking finish button. So Everyone knows we should have one primary key and yes, data maintenance, delivery class, table category, everything you guys know. So now I'm activating this one. So I'm creating one database table. That is what which I'm doing here. I'm creating data. Now I'm going to create a CDS view that reads the data from the database. Of course, there is no data right now, but reads the data from this database table. So for that, I'm going to right click on this package, new, other ABAP repository. I'm going to give core data services, data definitions. Click next. So I'm going to give a name of this CDS view. So this is a demo. That's the reason I'm copying and pasting it. Okay. Then click next. <clears throat> then next. I send a transport request and the template I'm sending define new template. So I am building a CDS view. Okay. So now I'll just give some name to it. SQL view name. 
Okay, now I'm going to write this table, which I'm trying to fetch it. Now I want to give all the fields. I want to fetch it. Okay. Then also I'm giving UI annotations also to enhance the application. These are the fields. Select from this table. These are the fields. And I'm adding UI annotations. I'll explain later what are these UI annotations. That is what we can do. Now to convert this into a wrap methodology, you have to give keyword root. Then only you will be able to create a okay you will be able to create a behavior definitions that is what this behavior definitions means you have converted the cds view into the wrap methodology by giving the keyword root and it is called a business object not don't think that sw1 business object this is a wrap business object it is different now this is done now what you will do you will right click and you will create a behavior definition for the CDS. So this is CDSP which we created, right? Then we will create a behavior definition. So right click, new behavior definitions. Okay, I have to close this one. Now I'll open again. There is some issue which I am facing. Some installation issue it is coming. <coughs> Just wait. So I'm just opening again this one. Yeah, see, see, I'm I'm trying to open this instance and it is asking to log in to the cloud platform. Okay. So now I will be pasting this here. See, I already logged in the cloud platform. So <coughs> it will directly log because I already logged here. See, I already logged. So now it opens automatically. So this some issue is there, some problem with installations. But anyway, I'm going back to my this one, go data services, data right click and create a behavior definition. Now it is coming, this pop-up message. Okay, next, click next. So I'm using manage use case as of now. <coughs> when we use manage use case, creating the record, deleting the record, updating the record, the framework will take care of. There's nothing I have to do. Okay, so yes, I have created the <coughs> behavior definition. In the behavior definition, okay, I will be mentioning I want to create a record, delete the record, update the record, I will be mentioning it. Okay, so that is a reason in the definition, you will mention what you want in your CD application or in the API. Okay, so where you will tell that, okay, I want to create a record, I want to delete a record, I want to update the record, you will be mentioning there. Okay, is it clear? Any questions guys? <coughs> I'm sorry. Okay, so now I'm not going to use any authorizations for that. That is the reason I'm commenting this script. And I'm not going to use any implementations for this demo class. I'm just commenting it. Okay. Then I'm going to activate this one.
now this is done now come back behavior definition is completed then i'll create a service definition okay for that right click on the data definition see based on this only you are creating service definition. so right click and you will be having new service definition just copying this one and stop i and keeping service definition So now I'm clicking next. Then I'm clicking next and I'm clicking finish button. Okay, I'm exposed to the CDS view. This is my CDS view, right? That is what even the PPT talks. See, this is what I'm exposing. Then I'm going to create a service binding. Now you see, yes, it has created a service definition. Now, right click. Okay, I need to activate this one. Got, got activated. So now, right click on the service definition. I'm creating service binding. Now, I'm just creating a service binding. Okay, I'm going to say use V2. See, here you have multiple options. This is the advantage of using RAP. Now, you see, I'm using V2 UI, okay, I'm building the application, theory application, UI means theory application and API means API, okay, then I'm clicking finish button, okay, now I am building a theory application, U for V2 version, you see, V2 UI, okay, then I click on publish button, then it will get published and it will give a URL for us. Now, client says, very important point, uh, client says, hey, I want, I don't want V2, I, it has older, pro, older, I, it does not have much features, so I want V4. Now, in, in the old approach, used to develop from the scratch. Now, uh, it is very simple, I will not go to create any from the scratch, I am going to create another service binding based on the service definition using V4. Simple. So, this is the reason why we are doing the additional steps so that this will be easy for us instead of developing from the scratch. I am going to show you that. Let it get this get activated, published. Then I will be creating V4. it is under processing you
Hello, Bobby. <coughs> Hello. Bobby, are you talking? Sorry, sorry, sorry. I was in mute. I'm really sorry. Okay. Uh -huh. So, okay. I'll repeat it again. What I want to tell you, right? We have just in the behavior definition, we have just, uh, what what is it? Let go. Here I was talking about. Okay. In the, at the rate, UA line item and the identification. Okay. So, before screen, I will just uh, click uh, cancel it. Discard. Okay. So, this, okay, this has come into the picture now, this table, because I have given the line item. That is the reason it has come. Okay. And then, this position 10, 20, 30, that is what it is 10, 20, 30 in the table it is displayed. Now, in the, I have create and delete now, how it came, because in the behavior definition, I have given create, update and delete. So that is the reason you are seeing create and delete. Then I will talk about update. Click on create. Now I am going to create sales order number 2. Customer name is Ravi. Then AU sales order return and amount. Sorry. Amount. Then currency. Then created by. And created on. Okay. And click OK. Then I am clicking on create. Okay, now you come back. It got created. Record got created. Now you go to this table. This is the table which we created. Right? Execute this table. So record is there. Have you done any complex coding? Nothing. Have you done any, any logic you have written code? Nothing. What you did? You have just used the create. Done. Very simple. Okay, so this, so what I'm planning to tell you, right? Uh, Bobby, one for example, here. yeah, tell me. Here, here we are not getting names. Uh, if you go to the output, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll tell you. Here you have to give a label. Here okay. in the UL item, you have to give label or and also you can also there is annotation called at the rate end user dot, and you can give the label. You will get it. Is it clear? Yeah, any more questions? Now uh, you want to edit it. Click on say, go get into record and click on edit button and do some. Uh, you want to change some, okay, customer name to Ravi to uh, something like uh, any other name you can put it. Yeah. Okay, then save it. Okay, then you want to delete it, select it, and you can delete it, it will get deleted. Okay, now I will tell you what is advantage of using wrap. Another advantage, I'll tell you, major advantage. Suppose you are moving from ECC to S4 HANA system or you are already in S4 HANA, you are upgrading to latest versions in S4 HANA. Okay, then if you convert all your interfaces into the wrap APIs, very important point. And if you convert all your SC38 report programmings into the RAP Fury apps, then later one day you will be have to go to the BTP where if there will be easy solution because already you have converted into the RAP everything. Then if you go to the BTP, RAP is available and you can easily trans move from the on premises system to the BTP. Understood? Any questions on this point? Very important point. You can propose to the client that if you convert everything into the wrap, then future one day everyone has to go to the cloud. So then it will be a ready solution. Very important point. No voice sir, from me. Hello? You guys are not able to hear me? Yeah, we can Hello? hear you. <clears throat> okay. We can. Yeah, Gunjan, uh, you just check from your side. And now it's coming. Actually, you were on mute at that time. Okay, okay, okay. So you understood the advantage of using the wrap? Okay. So you can tell, you can propose to the client, hey, let's convert everything into the wrap. Then one day when we move to the BTP, all BTP, the wrap is available in BTP, then it will be a ready-made solution. You no need to develop again. Is it clear? So that is the advantage of using the app. This is the evolution of the app. 
okay so now let's come back our requ our requirement yes we built in the v2 now client say no i don't want in v2 i want v4 simple right click on the service definition new service binding <coughs> just you in okay then binding type you select v4 simple so you are not developing anything from the scratch done finish then activate this one then publish it <coughs> it will get published how easy you see see every app is a methodology we are using best practices that is what i showed in the ppt best frameworks best practices so that we can, a developer can develop the enterprise grade application in an efficient way okay using the app you can do extensions you can do lot of features see the app methodology so that is the future of app yes yes app on hana will be deprecated amdp will be deprecated everything will be in app the future is wrap in next sap stalled in the openly that next 20 years wrap will be available in lot of meetings okay sap told that next 20 years wrap will be available and lot of innovations are coming in wrap any questions guys so uh, babi you said that <coughs> existing ac38 report can be uh, moved to wrap right correct wrap feed apps but uh, but um, uh, for that one do we need to develop a cds and all these yes, definitions absolutely. yes absolutely you have to convert okay. means you have to develop from the scratch Okay, it means nothing but uh, uh, scratch development, right? Again. Yes, that is what uh, uh, it has a greenfield implementations as well as brownfield implementations. Okay. Absolutely, you, you have to develop. Okay. You said that um, if uh, client can uh, move to uh, wrap uh, wrap side, then everything will be in a single uh, uh, step to move all the things to wrap. No, what I was telling right, wrap is available in BTP. right wrap is available mm -hmm. in on premises one day everyone has to go to ptp right everyone has to go move to the cloud one day so when you are moving to the cloud if you have all sa38 programming report and to move the cloud in sa38 it will not be available in the cloud you will not have any gui transactions in the cloud it will be only in the eclipse only okay so there is no sa38 concept only is available in the ptp okay so if you start converting that sc38 programming slowly in our on premises system to the wrap then when you are moving to the btp it is a ready made solution you understood now it's clear ha huh, got it yeah any more questions you will not have idox there is no concept of idox in a btp as for on a cloud okay there is no concept of sftp concept in the btp cloud when you are moving to s4 hana cloud so you have to convert when you are moving so before going and do when one day when you are moving to the cloud is a big project will happen now if you slowly moving everything into the wrap and once you move to the btp and it will be ready solution and also once you convert into the wrap you are able to open in the free apps and everything is so you can use new technologies to build your applications instead of going the old approach sc38 or sftp idox it's a old approach what is the advantage of using idox what is the advantage of using sftp transforms i think so it is advantage when you use api any one can connect any o data anyone can connect easily without much effort in between middleware is also not required most of this data if you want to go for synchronous how this wrap okay. will be, how this wrap will be uh, replaced uh, idox 
Yes. Why? What you are using, uh, IDOC, to transfer the data from the uh, SAP system to the non-SAP system, so SAP system to the SAP system. That is what you are using, that uh, IDOC, right? Correct. Correct. Right. Okay. Correct. So now I will not. Uh, so for when you are moving from data from SAP to non-SAP through IDOC, you want a middleware, right? Correct. And you have to do lot of setups and third party also. It is not a uh, easy. But when you use RAP. You are building an O data URL. That O data URL, a Java developer can consume easily. They can call it an HTTP protocol. No, they can easily call in their code. But but in this case, we are not seeing that uh, O data URL. This is a URL, no service URL. You see, so this is a URL. Okay, can we see the metadata with that one? Yeah, yeah I am clicking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just <laughs> one second. No? Um, Everything this uh, chat is taking some time. It got stuck. Yeah, this is the service URL where you can use it. Okay, so same URL you can easily. One second, if not, I'll just view this. Yeah, it is opening. You see. Okay, anyone can open it and can access it. Okay, actually we are going behind that. Uh, Second, just and I'll just close faster because we are going. We have to enter the username and password, and that's the reason. <coughs> so we need to see. Is it clear? Any questions, guys? And also, we are planning to build the V4. This is V4. This is V2. And this is V4. Right click, copy, and I'm just we thought of using V4, and we are building a theory up, right? Okay. So this this is using a predefined template called list report object page. Okay. Any questions, guys? Is it clear, guys? Any questions? No, right? Okay. Let's move. Yes. So what we built? We built a Fury application, right? Using the RAP. What is Fury? Everyone think Fury it is a technology. No, Fury is not a technology. Then what it is? It is a platform. No, it is not a platform. Then what it is? It is just a user interface. It is a just a user interface to develop the applications so what is that user interface okay so it is just a guidelines to develop the user interface so finally fury it is not a technology it is not a platform it is just a guidelines to develop the user interface is it clear okay what are the guidelines what are the design principles whenever you say fury application it should follow certain guidelines what are those guidelines Okay, it should be role based, responsive, simple, coherent, and delightful. If you follow these guidelines, then it is called a Fury application. Role based, design for you, your needs, how you work. Until that application is designed to your user, and you will not able to access the application. So that is called the role based. Responsive. Whenever you say Fury application, it should automatically support to the mobile. It will automatically support to the desktop. It will automatically support to the tablet. Okay, that is called the responsiveness. Simple. Whenever you say Fury application, you should focus only on the important fields. It should not be like MB21 transaction code where you have lot of tabs, a lot of fields, too complex, too confusing to the user and user. So, but whenever you say Fury application, it should be you can focus on the only important fields so that the app looks very simple. So, this is the guidelines of Fury. Coherent provides one fluid, seamless experience. Suppose you are creating a sales order number. The screen is UI is different. When you are creating a purchase order number, the screen is different. But when you say Fury application, all the creations will be one 
fluid only why blue should look same so that end user will not get confused so provides one fluid seamless experience delightful your fury application should be in such a delightful so that end user will have an emotional connection to work on it so if you follow all these guidelines it is called a fury application so finally sap fury it is not a technology it is not a platform it is just a guidelines to the develop the fury applications what are these guidelines these five principles are guidelines if you follow all these five principles then it is called a fury application you develop the fury application in any technology whether it's a pof java dot net etc but if you follow this five five guidelines then it is a fury application any questions guys okay no questions then we are moving to the s4 hana extensions this is a new concept which sap has introduced suppose you want to extend the standard fury app which sap is provided okay not only the developer and say very important point even the business users can also extend the app easily with the concept of key user tables and using ui adaptation mode <coughs> sorry <coughs> i'm sorry okay what i want to tell you right even the key users that end users themselves can extend the apps with the help of key users and ui adaptation they can extend the apps that is called the advantage of using the s4 hana extensions using the custom fields and the custom business objects and custom business logic and developer can extend the fury app extend the fields in their fury app using this fury apps as for hana in app and side by side extensions so this is called the in app extensions where using this fury apps you can extend the apps as a developer instead of going to web id not required and going to the business application ptp you want to extend the apps no using this fury apps you can extend this fields in the fury apps this will affect every throughout the applications that is the advantage of using s4 hana extensions you can develop the cds view using custom cds view app you can develop the analytical queries using custom analytical queries fury app you can build the kpis using kpis you can build the forms using forms so these are the new concepts or in, in s4 hana extensions which is available in on premises as well as in the btp in s4 hana cloud any questions guys this is called the in app extensibility or sap uff flexibility where we are extending the apps any questions so this is part of my training okay so now what is called this side by side extensions yes we are listening in app extensions side by side extensions lot in the uh, current trend right see you this is sap btp where you are developing a uifi application in the fury application in the btp in the bas in btp and you are exposing the data or data in our on premises system means left side in the btp you are developing in the right side you are developing with the on premises or data services so this is called the side by side extensions you are extending it suppose not only this one suppose you are building a fury application we are consuming an api from the api hub which sap is providing you are using the api we are extending the api service or you are building the sap ufi application using the bias so you are extending the side by side extensions you are building understand so this is called the side by side extensions and we are going to develop a side by side application using wrap methodology and we are going to build it this is a part of my training this is the future okay yeah anyone have any questions this is today's demo okay any questions guys are there in this my demo uh yeah babi i have a couple of questions <coughs> uh, yeah please go ahead see uh, for example uh, in sap reports mm -hmm. in sap report for example if we take uh, we create purchase order or we delete purchase orders or something all that can mm -hmm. be possible in uh, by using this wrap model yes absolutely we see we are going in my training we are have a bapis right we are going to use this bapis in our wrap okay that bapis can be used in uh, cds or uh, somewhere else no 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 in the behavior implementation i said oops a bap code will be there i said no i have uh -huh. told oops a bap code yeah no no not popf 
सर्विस इंप्लीमेंट डेफिनेशन एंड सर्विस इंप्लीमेंटेशन वी आर गोइंग टू हैव अ ऊप सब एप दे विल बी राइटिंग ऑल द कोड आई शो यू आई गो आई शो यू वेट अ मिनट आई एम जस्ट गोइंग टू ब्रिंग समथिंग दैट्स इट आई शो यू वन सेकेंड Here you see behavior definition on the top of this app behavior implementation. Here I will write about oops about. Sorry, sorry, I guess I guess you stopped the sharing. Oh, okay, I'll sorry again. I'll share again. Yeah, you can see here oops about. This is the which I have discussed, right? Here is the oops about. Okay, okay. So in behavior implementation, we can do all the manipulations, right? Normal, yes, you are right. Okay, uh, like all the calculations, uh, uh, like in uh, yes. as usual, as usual about program, we yes. test the data yes. different different tables and uh, we do some calculations yes. and yes, okay. yes, absolutely. Okay, so I am going to start a new batch from March eighth onwards. March eighth, okay. So this is the eighth. I'm starting new batch on March eighth. So exactly it is around one week, seven days are there. Okay, seven or eight days left. Okay. So what I'll be covering in my training. Hope you guys are able to see my screen, right? Yes, we can see. We can see your screen. Okay. So I'll start with about CDS views. Okay. Then. About CDS views, syntax rules, table functions, built basic expressions, operations, built-in functions, associations, joins, parameters, okay, and cardinalities, and okay, where all this are for the CDS views because the base for developer app is CDS views. So we need to know in depth about CDS views. But all I'll be covering. Then I will be call, calling. Uh, we'll move to the virtual data model concept in CDS views. Okay, then we will move to the <clears throat> developing the list report object page, analytical list page, overview page. Three apps will be developing using a web CDS views with UI annotations using the business application studio and SAP web ID. Business application studio we are going to use it in BTP. Okay, then we'll be developing the KPIs. Okay, we'll developing the virtual elements. We'll extend the apps, BOPF. Everything will be covering. Then we will be moving to the S4 HANA in-app and side-by-side -side extensions. Where what is in-app extensions? What is side-by-side -side extensions? What is custom fields? Custom logic? And we will be creating a side-by-side -side extension in BTP. Okay, in-app extensions will be developing it. Okay, then we will move to the SAP Fury. Yes, we will de deploy our Fury applications in the on premises system and will be displaying as a tile in the fury launchpad by creating catalogs tiles groups launchpad designer sap fury launchpad everything will be doing it okay then i will be moved to the about rest extensions of the standard fury app i will be doing okay extensions of this time so we have a we will be doing activation of the standard fury apps and extension of the standard fury apps also will be doing it Then we will move to the wrap, where we will develop the list report object page using wrap. We will develop manage use case, unmanage use case, database tables, how to create service definition, service implementation, service bindings, meta UI annotations. Okay, how to enable draft. Okay, how to custom entity. Okay, how to upload a attachment. Okay, how to consume an external API in the wrap. How to do multiple select. How to hide the tabs dynamically. How to implement BAPs in the on-premises systems uh, wrap methodology. How to develop the behavior managed and unmanaged and implement behavior implementations. How to implement the filters. Everything I'll be covering in wrap. Is it clear, guys? So this is part of my training. I'm going to start on March 8th onwards. So those who are interested can join it. Thank you. Yeah. Any questions, guys? 
This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so what are the programs which I'm explained during my training? I'll be put the programs in the drive where you can download. There is nothing need to be written during my training. Number one, once a class is over, I'll be uploading the recording video in the drive where you will be having view access for one year. What are the PPTs, study materials, everything I'll put in the drive where you can download. Recording video will be there view access for one year. Every Friday, I'll be giving exercises based on the topic which I covered on that week. And also, what are the programs which I'm covering is my real time projects which I have worked out as those only I'm putting in my training. Is it clear? And it will be duration will be duration will be 35 to 40 hours daily. It will be one and a half hour on weekdays.